Good morning. Uh, today, as promised last time, uh, I'm going to be starting off by looking at influence lines. Okay. So therefore, if you look at this, the we are going to be discussing influence lines in today's lecture. Okay. Now, what are influence lines? Well. Influence lines is just, it's the name of a topic where we consider the effect of moving loads. Essentially, influence lines are there to consider the effect of moving loads. What happens? Let's just take a simple beam. If I have a fixed load, let's say I have a fixed load of 100 kilonewton acting at L by 2. See, I know everything. I know what is the reaction here. I know what is the reaction here. I can find out this is going to deflect like this and the maximum bending moment will be at the center. And I can find out the maximum bending moment. Reactions A, reaction B. And I, for this particular, if this is my design load, I can compute my reactions and bending moment, shear force deflections, everything. Unique. This is for a static load. Now think about it. Here we say that, well, what's going to happen? Suppose this load wasn't a static load. Suppose this was a load which on the same beam it could be here it could then move here move here move here and ultimately go here and then move off okay now this load is a moving load Okay, it is moving with a particular velocity. Who cares? It may be, may be moving very slowly, moving very fast. The question now here becomes is that it's the same load, by the way, huh? 100 kilonewton. Now the question becomes what is the maximum reactions? What is maximum? bending moment, what is maximum shear force and right now I am just going to stick to the forces. Okay. Where? Well, how do I know? If the load was here, okay, this would be 100, this would be 0 and bending moment would be 0, wouldn't it? If the load was here, this would be 100, this would be 0 and bending moment would be 0. If it were here, this would be something else, this would be something else. And the question here is that, the question over here is that for this moving load, what is the maximum bending moment? In other words, what is the maximum? And before we answer that question, we need to answer this question, which is the position at which you are going to get maximum load. You know, because this is a moving load. And you can obviously understand just by looking at this, if I were looking at this particular reaction, position where this is maximum is when the load is here. But 
the load at that point here is zero. However, if the load is here, the maximum is 100. So therefore, you can understand that for this 100 kilonewton moving load, the maximum reaction here is 100, the maximum reaction here is 100, and bending moment, etc. How do we do this? This, you know, the only realistic way of doing this is by saying, okay, let me do this. Let me put the load at a position x from the left end. Okay, now this load, now this load is P. Okay, it could be any load. Okay, put it equal to at x and then find out. the reaction here, the reaction here, what would be the reaction over here? The reaction over here would be P x upon L. The reaction over here would be L minus x upon L. What would be the bending moment at the center? Okay, the bending moment at the center would be bending moment at center span would be equal to P x assuming that the load is on this side it would be if x is less than L by 2 then moment bending moment at this would be into L upon 2 which would be P x upon 2. If x is greater than L by 2, bending moment at center span would be P into L upon x by 2. Okay. So the question here then becomes is that what would be the maximum? For that, I would have to put x equal to 0. From x equal to 0, I would vary x equal to L. So, 0 is less than x is less than L. Vary it and find out the maximum value. If you put it in here, put x equal to 0, this is equal to P. Put x equal to L, this is P. Put x equal to L by 2, this would be P by 4 put x equal to less than that, you will see that this will always be less. So, the position, so therefore, x equal to 0 would give you the maximum, x equal to L would give you the maximum here and if you are looking at bending moment at center span, x equal to L by 2 would give you the maximum value of. Now, this you can do easily by uh, drawing putting P equal to X. And suppose my point of interest was this reaction. Then my influence line actually becomes what is this value as X moves from 0 to L. So, in other words, the way to influence line would be that suppose I were to draw the influence line for reaction at A you always draw the influence line for a particular response parameter. Okay? Influence line cannot be done for everything. The influence line by definition is the, I will come to the definition of influence line soon, but the point is that you can only do it for a particular parameter. And what is the influence line? The influence line is this, that I draw my x axis going from 0 to L. What do, does every point over here represent? Of every point over here represents a position on the beam of the load, of the vertical load. Okay? And what is the value at x equal to L? You will see 
that this is equal to p okay what is it and if you look if you look at the expression is this a linear in x it's linear in x and what is it when x equal to l you will see that this is equal to 0 and if you look at the as so this I am drawing now what is the value of the reaction when x equal to 0 this is the value what is the this is the reaction so what I am actually doing is in this structure this is my RA I am just drawing this and so if the load was at this point what would be the reaction RA it would be this the load was here what would be the reaction RA it would be this so therefore just by looking at the ordinate corresponding to any value of x I can find out the value of the reaction at A now what is done is the influence line is for P equal to 1 in fact if P is equal to a unit load then this ordinate is known as the influence line so if this is 1 this is my influence line influence line for RA note that in the influence line is for a particular response parameter please understand that okay so now how would I find out the influence line the best way and the easiest way is equilibrium direct approach put the load at x and find out this suppose this is my reaction find it out and then plug in the values of x and find out this value of course here p is equal to 1 you have to put unit load vertical okay suppose my bending moment the center span was my thing well I would put if x was less than equal to 0 this uh, less than l by 2 this would be the value this would be the value if it was greater than l by 2 okay if I were to plot this you will see that if I were to plot it it would look like this unit load note okay and this would be the influence line for the venting moment at the center span so if the load was here I could find it out 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 for any value of x so therefore what that means what this ordinate means is that if the load unit load was here what would be the bending moment at the center span would be given by this ordinate that is the definition of the influence line for a particular response parameter for a particular structure now if you had a statically determinate structure then equilibrium is the one way it is the direct approach and you can obtain it uh, absolutely directly okay however what you tend to do is you tend to not use the equilibrium approach for statically determinate structures why because there is another very very useful approach called 
using what is known as the Mueller Breslau principle. What does the Mueller Breslau principle say? What it says is the following. It says, let me have Let me take this. Okay. So therefore, I am trying to find out the influence line for R A. Now, the way the Mueller Breslau principle works is it says the influence line for R A is obtained by releasing. So instead of hinge, you release this. Okay, and give a unit displacement corresponding to this. Okay, and then whatever shape the displaced shape, what will the displaced shape look like? See, look, this is a hinge. This is a hinge. So if it was two hinges, how would this member look? This member would look like this. Okay, the member deflected shape of the member would look like this. And the Mueller-Breslau principle says that this deflected pattern is directly equal to the influence line. And note, you can see obviously that this does look like the influence line for RA, which we've already done. If we take this, what, what is it? Well, let me just first try to understand where does the Mueller-Breslau principle actually come from? The Mueller-Breslau principle actually works on the virtual work principle. What it says is this, that suppose I had the load at this point. The load is at this point. Okay. Then the reaction, I could find out the reaction. How? Well, put unit displacement. This is the method of virtual displacement. Put unit displacement corresponding to the support reaction that you are trying to find out and then the work done, external work done is equal to reaction A into 1 okay, plus P. Now P is downwards, sorry P is not, it's 1. 1 into, well, what is this? value, let us call it x, 1 into minus x, because the load is downwards, this is going upwards, is equal to 0. So, R A is then equal to x. And that is the Mueller-Breslau principle. It basically is based on the virtual work principle. So, it solves, remember, I had said originally that the method of virtual displacement can be used to replace the equations of equilibrium for a structure. And this is what the Mueller-Breslau principle actually does. What it says is, whatever you want to find the influence line for whichever response quantity, release the restraint corresponding to that uh, to that response quantity. Give a unit displacement corresponding to that response quantity. Okay? Then the deflected shape would represent the influence line. Because remember that the load that you have is only a unit vertical downward load that you are finding it out for. So that is the basis for the Mueller-Breslau principle. Okay. So having the Mueller-Breslau principle, we are now able to, let me say that, let me look at this particular case. Note that whenever we are drawing influence lines, we do not have any load. Because what is the assumed load? The assumed load is unit vertical 
load at a point acting downwards. So, in when we are looking at influence lines, we do not have a load at all because it is always unit vertical load at a point acting downwards. Okay. So, now how do we find out? Let us say I have this member and I want to find out the bending moment, the influence line for the bending moment at the center span. Muller Breslau principle. What is the restraint corresponding to the bending moment? Remember, corresponding to the bending moment is that the rotation has to be continuous. That is how you generate a bending moment. If rotation was not continuous, then you would not generate a bending moment. Okay? So, therefore, which is uh, the uh, how do I remove the restraint? Well, I put a pin here. As soon as I put a pin here, what happens to the bending moment? It gets released. Okay? So, now let me assume that I am going to assume look always you have to define positive. So, I am going to define this as my positive bending moment for us. So, if you look at it then this is for this side. So, it will be like this and this will be for this side. This is the action that you do. If you do that action what happens? Center this and this and what is the unit? The unit is the relative rotation. So, this has to be unity. Now, note that if this has to be unity and this is L by 2, you will see that this is equal to half and this is equal to half. And if you look at this, half into L by 2 is equal to L by 4. I have my influence line for bending moment at center span. Okay? Using the Miller Breslau principle. Okay? And today what I am going to do is I am going to solve several problems on this aspect. So I have I've looked at reaction, I have looked at bending moment. Bending moment, whatever is a positive you give a reaction in that way and get unit relative displacement. Suppose I were asked to find out shear force. How would I do shear force? Now, shear force note is that shear force actually tries to do what? It tries to get relative uh, displacement of one edge corresponding to the other. And the only way this is stopped is because of the continuity and that is what develops a shear force. If I make it relative to each other, but I have to ensure that the bending moment is not released. Okay? I am only finding out the for the shear force. So, what has to happen is that I have to do Miller Breslau principle says unit relative displacement. So, the displacement between the two edges has to be equal to 1, but the slope have to remain the same so that there is no relative rotation between the two ends. So, what I am doing is I am introducing a fictitious cut to release the restraint corresponding to the shear force. However, I am not making a hinge at that point. So, it looks weird, but this is the whole effect. The, how do I ensure that there is no hinge? By ensuring that there is continuity of slope. So, you are maintaining continuity of slope 
without maintaining continuity of the beam. Okay, this is a very funny situation. So, let me say that I want to find out shear force at the center span and my definition is plus minus this way. So, if you look at it this way, this implies that this goes up and this comes down. Okay, because if you look at this side, this is the one that is going to be pulling it down. So, do this, then what do you get? You get something like this and here you get something like this. The only thing that you have to ensure is that since this becomes any restraint removal that you do in a statically determinate structure makes it a mechanism and a mechanism you only get straight lines. So, all you have to ensure is that this theta and this theta are equal. That will ensure that the tangent here and the tangent here are equal to are equal to each other and this is equal to 1. Now, if you look at this, this is equal to let us say that this is L 1, this is equal to L 2. Now, these have to be theta. So, by definition by equal triangles you will see that these ordinates are half and half and these, these are 0. So, that becomes the influence line for the shear force at the center span. Okay. Suppose I were to ask you to find out the bending moment diagram at, uh, sorry, the uh, influence line for the bending moment at quarter span. How would I, again for the simply supported beam, how would I do this? Quarter span. So, I have half, quarter, three fourths. So, quarter span. Again, I need to do this. Okay. So, when I need to do this, this one will go this way and this way, where this angle has to be equal to 1, the relative. Now, how do we obtain the ordinates? Well, let us look at it. If this is 1, let us, this is a constant length L, this ordinate is L. So, this has to be L divided by 1 by 4 and this has to be equal to L divided by 3 by 4. So, this theta 1 is equal to this theta 2 equal to this. What does that mean? This means theta 1 is equal to 4 L where L is this. I am sorry, uh, this is the unit. So, I will call it x. So, this is going to be L upon 4. So, this is L upon 4. This is x upon 3 L upon 4. So, this basically becomes 4 x upon L and theta 2 becomes 4 x by 3 L, but theta 1 plus theta 2 is equal to 1. This implies that twelve x plus four x upon three L is equal to one. So sixteen x upon three L is equal to one. X equal to three L upon sixteen. So this becomes three L upon 16. Okay? And that becomes your ordinate for one fourth span. Suppose I wanted to find out the shear force at one fourth span. How would I do it? Well, shear force at one fourth span. Okay? L by 4. How would I do it? Well, I would give a 
Okay. So, this is x1, this is x2, this is theta, this is theta by definition because the slope here and the slope here have to be the same. So, what we have is x1 plus x2 is equal to 1 because relative displacement has to be equal to 1. Okay. So, x1 plus x2 is equal to 1 as well as x1 upon L by 4 is equal to theta, x2 is e x2 upon 3L by 4 is equal to theta. So, what essentially it means is that x1 is equal to See, this is equal to, so this one is equal to this. So, what we get here is that 3x1 is equal to x2. However, x2 is equal to 3x1. So, if you substitute in, you will get x1 equal to 1 by 4 and x2 is equal to one by 3 by 4. And so, therefore, this is one fourth and three fourth, and that is the influence line for the shear force at one fourth span. Do this, satisfy yourself that both of these you can actually get by the direct approach. Satisfy yourself that the uh, the influence lines that I have drawn for all the specific characteristics actually come out to be th them. The advantage, the main advantage is that the whole idea of finding the influence line actually is an equilibrium problem. But by using Miller-Breslau principle, we change it into a geometry problem. And geometry is always much easier to do than equilibrium. Now, let us look at some other, uh, today I am only going to be looking at statically determinate uh, structures because just to introduce you to the concept of how to apply Mueller-Breslau principle. So, let us look at various structures for which the Mueller-Breslau principle can be used. So, let us look at this. This is my structure. This is a statically determinate structure okay? and I want to find out the influence line. Note that the vertical load can only go from here to here. This is a factor that is very, very important. Okay? It is a unit vertical load, so it can only go from here to here. Okay? So, now I want to find out the influence line for this the moment okay m a and i'm going to assume that this is positive okay so what do i do then take this structure and i release this and i give it a unit note that I have only released it, I have not let it move up and down. So, all I have released it and I have given it a unit rotation here. So, I give it a unit rotation here. What does the beam become? Unit rotation here, this is unity. So, what does this value become? Becomes L. And if you look at this, the influence line for M A is where each ordinate over here gives me the value of the moment due to the load being at that point. Think of the load at this point. What would M A be equal to unit load at this point of length L? M A would be equal to L. Okay. Suppose in this particular problem, okay, I wanted to find out the bending moment at this point. What would I do? 
well i would and this is positive okay so what would i do i would put a restraint here okay and find out how this would go so think about it put a, introduce a hinge and do this now note this part is fixed over here so if you look at this when i introduce a hinge over here the simplest thing that would happen would be this and then unit this would be a unit because that is the relative rotation between the two sides i've introduced a moment here and this would be l upon 2 think about it and you will see that it is indeed minus l upon 2 if you have the load here and this is you've taken as positive this is sagging and you'd see that if you put load here you would get hogging which is basically minus l upon 2 so this would be suppose i wanted to find so what happens what does this mean this means that when the the influence line for this portion is zero and only kicks in here why put the load here what will be the bending moment here you will see that the bending moment everywhere beyond this point is zero and therefore you wouldn't have any bending moment and that's reflected by the muller breslau principle okay suppose i wanted to find for this same structure i wanted to find the shear force at this point and my positive is this way so essentially what i am doing is i'm going to force them to do this okay now how am i going to get the shear force at this point think about it the only way that i would get shear force is in other words i'm just pulling it this way now this point cannot do anything okay so therefore if you really look at it the the diagram would look like this unity unity at the point at which you have this and this slope and this slope are the same is that clear because this part as soon as you make a cut over here this goes by this and this does not have to rotate remember that you always go for the simplest displacement pattern which can satisfy your conditions kinematic conditions so this is what happens when you make a cut here and you have to keep this slope and this slope same the easiest way to do is keep this and move this down then the slopes remain the same this becomes one and again if i put a load here what's the shear force here you will see that the load shear force will be negative 1 and it will remain negative 1 till it goes beyond this which it will become zero so this is my v at point c influence line for the displacement at point c okay so now let's get slightly more complicated okay so we've done fairly simple things and i hope you have figured out how to get it for reactions support reactions which are linear support reactions which are moments and also draw the influence line for bending moment and shear force okay so now let me take an example which would be slightly more complicated let me consider a situation which is like this okay uh, this is the frame this is a statically determinate structure okay now where does the uh, this thing move think about it like i'm going to draw the influence line actually for there is a crane moving over here so crane goes from here to here okay and for that 
I need to draw the influence lines because I ultimately for the crane I need to know what would be the maximum support reaction, I would need to know what would be the maximum bending moment, all of those kinds of things I need to find out. Okay? So therefore, in this particular case, let me say, so therefore the vertical load is moving from here to here only. Okay? And note that, now let me say that in this particular case, I would like to find out okay, the influence line for reaction at A. So, let me say A, B, C, D. Reaction at A. Now, note that the hinges are here and here. Okay? So, I release this. I release this and I give a unit displacement corresponding to this. If I give it a unit displacement corresponding to this, this will go here. This will go one here. Okay. But, but it is very important to understand that this is not, cannot, I cannot draw it this way. Why can't I draw? Why? What is the problem of drawing it like this? Think about it. In other words, I am saying, why can't the reaction at this point be the same as what we have done earlier, which is this. Now, there would be a problem. Why? Because if this member went up like this and this thing went, this would imply that this which is a continuous joint would be hinged and that is cannot be true because the only thing that we are doing is releasing this and making it become something like this. Now for this, how does it, how will it be satisfied? The only way that it would be satisfied would be if this went this way, so that here some L, so that this would be L, so that you would have a continuity of here and then this would also have to remain and then you have something like this. Okay? So, this would be the displacement pattern. Okay? How much would this move by? Well, let us see. Let me say that this is L, this is L and this is L. Okay? Now, we have to ensure that this theta and this theta and this theta are, are the same. And you will see that this one, if this theta has to be, this displacement is L theta. So that means if this is 1, this has to be, theta has to be 1 upon L. And if this 1 upon L, this is 1, this is 1, and this is the displacement pattern. Exactly. This one remains here and this one goes up. Okay? But what is the influence line here? Is this displaced shape the influence line? No. Understand that the only thing that we are interested in is the influence line, is the displaced shape of the part of the member on which the load acts. And on which member does the load act? The load acts only on the beam, not on the columns. And therefore, if you look at that, what does that look like? The influence line? The influence line looks like this. If you look at that influence line, that influence line looks like this. 1, 0. Is there any difference between the influence line for this and the influence line for the simply supported beam? No. Why? That is because that in a simply support you know, when you have a, when you have a, a statically determinate, 
okay you just have to ensure that these so this this one and one shift has absolutely nothing to do with that because it's only the vertical ordinate that actually tells us what the reaction is when the load is placed in various positions okay so therefore the point here is that for this RA and you will see that this RA whether it is for a simply support or whether it is for this frame it makes no difference. So that is for RA. Let me ask you that same problem. Okay. Let me say that I want to find out the fixed end moments, sorry, uh, I would like to find out this, the influence line for the bending moment at this point. Okay. So what do I need to do? <clears throat> All I need to do is, I need to put a hinge here and rotate it so that I get unity. So when I have that, you will see that let us assume that this remains this way and I have this. But now, can, can this go like this? It can't. For the simple reason is that if this has to go in this fashion, what is going to happen? This will have to move down and there is no way that this can move down because of then this becomes an issue. Let us look at then what would this, so therefore obviously this cannot remain straight and this cannot go this way because this would ensure that you have something like this. Okay. So what would you have to do? Think about it. The only way that is what, so that means this has to be moved here. Okay. So therefore, take this and move this such that you get a situation that this does not move. See, this cannot rotate because if this point rotates, see this point cannot go anywhere. So, this point cannot go anywhere vertically. If this point cannot go anywhere vertically, then the only way that this can only move in this direction. It cannot move in any other direction because this cannot move up and down. This cannot move and up and down. It's the only way this can go up and down. So, if you really look at it, you will see that ultimately the bending moment looks like this member is going to look like this. This is going to be equal. See, this has to be equal to 1. So, this is 1. If this is 1, this becomes L over 2. This becomes L over 2. This becomes L over 2. This has to remain straight so that this remains straight. And if this remains straight, this also remains straight. Okay. So, my displaced shape is this. But again understand one critical parameter and that is that this is the displaced shape but what is the influence line for this bending moment? The influence line for this bending moment is this and what is that influence line? If you look at it the influence line is 
zero. What does that mean? That means that if this, the load moves here, there is never any bending moment at this point and you can satisfy yourself that these two members actually do not deform. Okay, so the bending moment, this is it. Okay, suppose I wanted to find out the shear force at this particular point. Let me do that. And this is the final thing that I am going to be doing in today's thing. That same frame. I'm sorry, this doesn't. It's a continuous. It's continuous here. It cannot have a hinge there. It's continuous over here. And I want to find out, so this is A, B, C, D, E and I want to find out the influence line for shear force at E. Okay. How do I find that out? Well, I have to give a relative displacement and the relative displacement has to be such that this goes like this and this goes like this. So that is going to be the thing. However, this is not possible because this again would entail. So how would I have to do it? I would have to move this this way, move this this way and then if I were to look at it, so this point also would move this way. So if I were to draw the deflected shape, it would look like this. Okay, where this angle and this angle are the same and then this angle and this angle have to be the same to ensure and so this angle and that angle has to be the same. All the thetas have to be the same and the only way that you can get those thetas is that this theta is equal to, what is this equal to? This is equal to L by 2 theta, this is equal to L by 2 theta, now L by 2 theta plus L by 2 theta is equal to 1, so theta is equal to 1 upon L. So if you have 1 upon L, then what do you get? You will be getting half, half. And if you look at the ultimate, this shifted has no role to play. If I look at the, this, it would go like this, half, half. And as far as the shear force at this point is considered, it does not make a difference what I have in the frame or not. Okay? So this is, so therefore you have to be, again, the entire thing boils down to the fact that influence lines are obtained through kinematic relationship. The Mueller-Breslau principle lays stress on getting kinematic relationships which would be compatible. Therefore, you always have to give a unit displacement corresponding to the degree of freedom or to the, the uh, release that you are going to do. And if you have a statically determined structure and you give a release, it becomes a first order mechanisms. So you are bound to get only straight lines. Okay? You have to get only straight lines as influence lines for a statically determinate structure. I hope I have been able to establish uh, the concept of influence lines as well as the concept of the Mueller-Breslau principle. Next few times I am going to be spending more time on the application of the Mueller-Breslau principle, firstly for statically determinate structures and then we will be moving on to statically indeterminate structures. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.